Hello everyone, it's Mariners Fanatic here, and today I will be going over my mid-season review for the Mariners as they finished their 30th game of the 60-game season on Sunday. Right now, the Mariners are 11-19 and and in fourth place after sweeping the Rangers over the weekend. Um, but we know we knew coming into this year it would be tough with the hardest schedule in baseball. However, we've gotten what I would consider to be our hardest portion of the year, playing the Astros twice already, the Dodgers, the A's, and catching the Rockies when they were hot. Uh, we got all of that out of the way. Overall, I would say that I'm encouraged by what I've seen so far, even though there have been a few rough patches, but it's exciting to see regardless of the record. After that brief look of where we are at right now, I want to look back and kind of give my review of the season as we are halfway through. And I'm going to be talking about players and what positives and negatives I'm seeing, similar to in how last video was, but just a little bit different. Um, I won't reestablish points that I already made in my first video, uh, so if you want to check that out, I'll link that at the end of the video. In this video, I'm going to be giving out awards for you know the team as how they've done so far uh, in the first half of the season. Um, and before I get into those awards, I want to establish that Kyle Lewis has obviously been the MVP of the team and is by far our best player. He could easily win any of these awards, um, but for me, he's just going to be the MVP of the team, and I'm not going to have him winning any of the other awards I give out, um, just so everyone knows ahead of time. Kyle Lewis is really good, and I think that if he can keep this up, he will be the Rookie of the Year for the American League, and that's what I'm hoping for. So, uh, getting into the awards, besides Kyle Lewis, the Mariners Rookie of the Year so far has to be Justice Sheffield. In my last video, I was a little down on him. I wasn't very high on him. Uh, I didn't like how he pitched last year and the fact that he dropped in the prospect rankings and was not performing well. I wasn't optimistic about that trade to give away Paxton for Sheffield. But he has proved me wrong. In these last few starts that he's had, he's pitched three great games in a row against the Rangers, Rockies, and Astros. Uh, the Rangers' offense is scuffling, but the Rockies and Astros at the time were both uh, doing pretty well. So I'm excited to continue seeing his growth. And next up, I'm going to give out the Silver Slugger for the team. Um, again, besides Kyle Lewis, I'm going to have to give it to Kyle Seager. His average with runners in scoring position is insane. It's like 350. And he's got like 20 RBIs. Overall, he's got like 23 RBIs and I think five or six home runs. But he's been doing amazing and very clutch. Um, he's been super clutch, winning a lot of games for us. Him and that tandem of Kyle Lewis and Kyle Seager, 3-4, and then Austin Nola at 5, is honestly one of the better 3-4-5s in the league right now. And I know that sounds crazy, you know, coming from a Mariners team, but those three guys have been amazing for us regardless of what the rest of the team puts out. Anyways, Kyle is hitting almost 300 and has been doing great. It's great to see him uh, bounce back, and I'm happy that he's doing well. And I hope we don't trade him um, with the trade deadline coming up, just because I don't think we're going to get enough value back to make that worth it. He's been such a staple in our lineup that I really think it would be worth more to keep him, especially when we really don't have many other options at third base. Um, Dylan Moore's out right now. He'd probably be the best fit, um, but we released Patrick Wisdom. We traded uh, Daniel Vogelbach. Even He's not a third baseman, but that means that somebody else has to play first base if Evan White's not playing first. Somebody else has to DH, you know, so there's a lot going on, and I really hope we can uh, hold on to Seager. For the Gold Glove, I mean, Evan White takes it easily. J.P. Crawford has been doing amazing at shortstop, um, and I'm really happy to see J.P.'s defense doing so well. But Evan has really helped him and everyone else. He made some crazy individual plays, and just some of the more what you would consider routine picks and you know plays at first base have just been incredible to watch. Uh, so he's definitely going to get the gold glove, and his bat is starting to come around too, which is an encouraging sign. He did make the jump from double A, so it wasn't like an expectation that he was going to be doing as well as Kyle Lewis is doing, um, but to start the season, him batting almost 100 was a little rough, uh, but now he's up to, you know, about 150, which is still not good, 
but he's getting there. Had that six RBI game the other night, and you know I'm excited for Evan White to continue to develop as a hitter. I'm excited to see continuing development from Evan White on the hitting side, but his defense has been amazing, and that's why he gets the Gold Glove. The unsung hero for me would have gone to Dylan Moore, just his ability to play anywhere, and his bat has been great this year. But unfortunately, he just went down with the wrist injury, so he's been out for you know, a few days and won't be back for another few days. So I have to give it to Austin Nola. He has been amazing behind the plate, catching way more than he was originally planned to catch. Um, it was supposed to be Tom Murphy back there, and Nola would just fill in as needed, you know, so he could play first base, left field, wherever else. Um, but he's been amazing behind the plate. You know, his offense has been great, too. You know, like I said earlier, 3-4-5, Kyle Lewis, Kyle Seager, and Austin Nola is pretty great to have, and he's been doing awesome. And I hope we don't trade him. I know he's not a part of the youth movement as he's almost 30 years old, I think, but it'd be really nice if we could hold on to him because we don't have a lot of catching options. Next up is the Reliable Reliever Award, and that's going to go to Taylor Williams. A week or so ago, it would have gone to Matt McGill, um, as him and his awesome mustache were just tearing it up. He hadn't given up a run, and then he got rocked by the Dodgers. Now, it was only one outing, but then looking more at it, Taylor Williams has done amazing. You know, picked him up from the Brewers off waivers in the offseason, and he's got six saves for us. And just watching him pitch, he's dirty. He's got a great slider, great fastball, and it's encouraging to see a few of our younger arms like Taylor Williams develop and really take charge of a role that wasn't his to start with. Um, and it wasn't Matt McGill's either, but both of them have been doing great, and I'm excited to see Taylor Williams continue to grow. So next up, the stand-up starter, is what I'm going to call it, is uh, Marco Gonzalez. You know, he's Mr. Consistency. Honestly, you could put any one of our rotation pieces in there. You could put Nick Markavich or Margavicious, however you say his last name. I'm not sure. seems like it's different every time, but... The whole rotation lately has been pretty good. Taiwan Walker's been solid. Obviously, Justice Sheffield, Justin Dunn had a great start. So there's a, been a lot of encouraging signs out of the pitching rotation. But Marco Gonzalez leads the team in ERA. His strikeout to walk ratio is amazing. And it's just exciting to see him keep doing what he's been doing for us the past couple years, which is really uh, solidify that rotation and, you know, hold it down at the top spot, even though he's realistically not a number one starter. It's amazing to have him be consistent out there. So next up, my players to watch. I'm going to give two here, Jake Fraley and Sam Haggerty. Now, Jake Fraley just came up. We finally sent Malik Smith down. And if I'm being honest, I don't want to see Smith in a Mariners uniform. I have strong opinions about him and uh, D. Gordon. You know, Even though I both I like both the guys, they're just they're not cutting it for me and you know it's obvious the, by the fact that Smith got sent down he got sent down last year at some point came back did okay uh, but at the end of the day I think that Jake Fraley has more potential not only from a defensive side of things but also on the offensive side of the ball um, he's going to be an amazing outfielder and he's going to hit well and so it's encouraging to see him get his chance and then the next player is Sam Haggerty He's been amazing since being called up and has hit safely in all five of the games that he's played in. Uh, he showed a little bit of pop. He showed a lot of speed and some good defense out in the outfield and in the infield. So it's exciting to see Sam Haggerty, who is also a switch hitter, and I like to see that. I hope that Sam Haggerty continues to do well. Jake Fraley can step up and take charge of one of those outfield positions that's kind of been given to him. So I hope these two players continue to develop. And I think you guys should watch those ones as the rest of this season goes along. So next I want to talk about trade pieces. I think I'm going to give you three pitchers and three hitters in our lineup that I think are trade pieces. Obviously, Kyle Seager is a trade piece. He's been doing amazing all year. Uh, I would prefer we didn't trade him, but... By his numbers, by his numbers, he's been great to both watch and other teams are likely going to be interested in that bat. And a former Gold Glover, 
he's got pretty good defense. It's not as solid as it's ever been, but he's still pretty good over there. Second trade piece on the hitter side of things is D. Gordon. I don't know if we're going to be able to unload that contract. He's batting like 150 or something like that, so it's going to be tough to get rid of that contract. However, I think that with the shortened season and the expanded rosters, people are going to be interested in having that speed threat. The Mariners already have a lot of speed in their lineup. Guys like Sam Haggerty, who can play the infield and outfield, Dylan Moore, Tim Lopes, and then Ched Long is playing second base, not playing an amazing second base, but at the end of the day, Shed Long is still producing more than D. Gordon has for us. So that's why I think D. Gordon is a trade piece. And then the last one on the hitter side of things for me is going to be Tim Lopes. We have multiple utility players, and at the end of the day, Tim Lopes might be a player that teams are looking for. Maybe they need another guy on their bench who's consistent both on defense and hitting-wise. He hasn't been an all-star per se, like Kyle Lewis, you know, batting about 250 and playing everywhere in the infield and the outfield. Tim Lopes is a piece that I don't think we will trade. You know, he could be traded as one of our utility guys. Then moving on to my three pitchers that I think are trade pieces. Honestly, I don't want to trade any of these guys, these three guys, but the first one is Taiwan Walker. He's been pitching really well against both the A's and the Dodgers his past couple starts. And, you know, it's encouraging to see him bounce back from Tommy John surgery. Now, he could be picked up by another team. I hope he's not. I'd like to see him re-sign to a multi-year contract. At the end of the day, I don't know if that's in the cards, as we do have a lot of pitching prospects coming up. Next is going to be Matt McGill. He's been one of our best relievers besides one bad game against the Dodgers. And he's definitely an intriguing option that might be heading out the door. Um, I don't know how active Jerry DePoto is going to be. Interesting to see what he does this next week before the deadline. But yeah, so the last pitcher I'm going to talk about is Nick Markovicius or Markevich, however you say his name. He's been really solid filling in for Kendall Graveman, and I'd like to see him stay as well. But ultimately, we do have a lot of starters, and we have multiple starters waiting in the wings, like Logan Gilbert and George Kirby and those prospects. So he's not necessarily a long-term piece, I don't think, unless we put him back in the bullpen. But we already have Markevich, uh, Sheffield, Kikuchi, and Gonzalez, who are all lefties. And we need more right-hand pitching, I think, personally. I don't like having a rotation that's full of lefties. You know, it is what it is, and so we'll see what happens. But I think Markevich could be a piece for someone looking for a starter or even a lefty bullpen arm. So that's going to be the end of my midseason review, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the content, and it'd be nice if you guys could check out that first video I made um, about my initial impressions of the 2020 season. And I hope you guys will like and subscribe, and Mariners Fanatic out.